So this video might be a little bit more exciting than some of my other teardowns. I'm not going to be going too far into this, probably for this video, we'll see. But this is a Tektronix TDS544A, 500 megahertz, one giga sample a second oscilloscope that I got. It has four channels, but there is something wrong with it. So what I'm going to do, for starters, is I'm going to put through its power-up sequence. Hopefully the camera will cooperate. And I don't know what the power-up sequence is supposed to look like for this. I probably should go find some videos, see if anyone shows it. I don't know if this is correct or not. It does look a little strange, but some of this looks like self-test. And it's partially initialized now. And there's the self-test results. So it failed the acquisition, the attention acquisition interface tests. Oh, that's interesting. The, uh, I forget if it's the acquisition processor interface or the front panel tests that failed, but there was three fails initially. Maybe it past one of them because I've uh, signal plugged in channel one right now. I'm not sure. But according to some quick Google searching, these two failures imply that there's a board in here with uh, bad capacitors and possibly some cold solder joints, which is kind of surprising because I don't know in the scope of things how high end this is, but I would assume that it's pretty, you know, it's pretty darn fancy for its age. Um, it would be the nicest scope I owned if it worked, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. And I don't fully know how to use this one. It's not quite as simple as the analog scopes. So currently my, uh, function generator should be putting out a one kilohertz sine wave. And if I understand the interface correctly, I got it to set up as close as I could to my old school analog oscilloscope where it's uh, two volts per division and then I couldn't do a millisecond, half a, or no, what do I have? I have 0.2 milliseconds. I couldn't get it to do that. Wrong way. But I kind of flipped through it, and I can't get a signal to show up. And I don't know why. I'm assuming it's because those, those uh, startup tests failed. But I don't fully understand how to use this quite yet either. I tried the auto set button, hoping that maybe it would just figure it out on its own. But I get nothing. And the weird thing is... I turn on the other channels. Oh, I think I missed channel four. And then I hit auto set. Let's see if it does it. It probably won't now that I'm filming. Yeah, it won't. It, it gave me some random traces for channels three and four, even though nothing's plugged in. And I tried, granted this uh, probe I have here is super sketchy and not not at all high quality, but I tried hooking up to the test points here on the front. Let's see here. And it just doesn't want to show anything. I'm leaving switch. I think I have to switch the trigger. Yeah, channel two. Oh, I forgot. 
and close that. So I don't know what's going on here. Let's see, it wants one millisecond. And then half a volt. Oh, hey, the gibberish is back. Yeah, I don't know what any of this is, what's going on there. This channel 2 is the uh, green one up top. Let's see if we can... It eventually wants to move down. <laughs> kind of gets stuck. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not sure, I guess, what the signal from this is supposed to look like either. Because I think on some of the oscilloscopes that have uh, test points, they put out like a frequency and a sine wave of some sort. I'm still kind of learning. I have some experience with oscilloscopes, but not a lot. So, unfortunately, I don't know what's going on with this unit yet. I'm going to have to probably read some manuals. Maybe there's some settings lingering that I'm not aware of that the previous owner left behind. Maybe I can factory default it, and that'll solve my problems. I'm not sure. But the initial stuff that I did find implied that those uh, power on diagnostic errors had to do with the hardware failure internally. So I'm going to pause the video and switch camera angles and uh, pop the cutter off, take a look inside. So I'll be back in a second. Alright, so time to take a look inside now. Hopefully I can uh, keep this in frame and hopefully avoid getting shocked also. The CRT tube is on this side of things, so I think as long as I'm careful of where I put my dirty fingers, <laughs> I won't get electrocuted. Oh, also there's a physical power switch on the back. I didn't even notice that. They just left it in the on position with the previous owner. So there's four... Uh, I think, oh, these are T20 screws in the back. And my expectation is this cover is just going to slide back. piece holding the cord onto the chassis, but it doesn't seem to be very easily removable, so I guess the cord's just going to have to stay along for the ride. I'm really bummed that this has problems, because I figured if this was one of the many with bad CRT tubes inside, that's no big deal, because there's a VJ output. I'll just hook it up to an external monitor and everything will be good. But that's the one thing that doesn't have problems, it seems, so far. Although I suppose trying to navigate the uh, on-screen menus might be difficult on the external display. I'm trying to get those lined up, but I don't know. I think I'm going to tip this on its face. And I'm assuming this cover is just going to slide right off. I'm going to have to kind of do this off frame. Hmm. Yep, there it goes. And I'm going to have to be kind of cognizant of where I put my fingers after this. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. All right. The uh, back plate just comes off of the uh, aluminum frame. Alright, so i got to be mindful where my fingers go as I take this off, because I don't want to get shocked by a CRT tube. It's never happened to me before, and I don't want to learn to see what it feels like. Oh, that's a stiff cover. Oh, man. I'm kind of hoping... 
that they have the naughty bits of the CRT protected. That would make me happy. Also, I'm still struggling here to figure out. It's binding on me. Fortunately, my camera does not allow me to uh, do this in frame. That's no fun. There we go. It's just a bent piece of aluminum. Nothing special there. Holy buckets, look at that fan. All right. Ooh, that's pretty. I think I'm going to just take this and not touch anything. It's going to hurt. Looks like the uh, monitor is fairly isolated. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be easy to touch the naughty bits of the CRT assembly. Which is reassuring. I don't see myself tearing this down any further though, because this is a lot more complicated inside than I was hoping. At least for this video. If I tear it down to fix it, then that would be a different story. Once in here. <laughs> so this is uh, one of the PCVs. I'm not sure what the purpose of this particular board is. But that's the inside. Do a little zooming in here. And I will try to slide this across into little quadrants. Don't know if there's too many videos of the internals. Also, there's nowhere good to grab. I'll just gently slide it. That fan is insane. I can't believe how big that fan is. Centronics. This is a breakout board here for Centronics and uh, Serial interface. I'm assuming the Centronics is for a printer and then serial is for just whatever serial task you want to do. This ribbon cable here is for the uh, no, that's not labeled on there. Ah, yeah, GPIB port. I, I knew it, but I couldn't remember. And this one appears to be VGA. Well, that's cool. There's a little seven segment display there. I'm guessing that's probably some sort of like post or error code related output. Zoom back out and then we're going to look at the side here. So there's some uh, interconnects here. A couple ribbon cables and then hmm, just a PCB with some connectors on it there. Which goes to the bottom side of the board. Alright, I'm going to tip this over without messing anything up, hopefully. Got some stuff going on here. This must be shielding or heat sinking. I don't know for sure on that. Mm, doesn't make contact. It might be for rigidity, actually. I guess, I don't know why shielding would be that big of a deal externally. Since, uh... <laughs> The housing is solid aluminum. Oh, and that don't look good. Yeah, this thing's hosed. I'll zoom into what I'm seeing here. I'm pretty sure this thing's fried. I don't know what that's about, but that don't look good to me. Zoom in a little further, maybe? Not sure what happened there. Maybe I'll get a little closer to the camera. The camera doesn't want to be quite as focused as I'd like. And then I gotta find the section of the board. That looks charred. <laughs> so 
So this is definitely not something I'm going to be fixing. This is no good. And uh, yeah, so that's unfortunate while I'm freehanding this. Got a little ceramic package there with a fancy heat sink. I'm guessing that must be a processing chip of some sort because it's right next to the fan. And boy, is that a chonker of a fan. 24 volt. Oh, it's a Rotron. I like Rotron fans. They're nice. They always have really nice bearings. At least these really old, chunky aluminum fans that are made by Rotron. September 15 of 93. Whew, it's old. They always just, they, they spin so smoothly. They always work. But, yeah. So, uh, this is going on eBay. <laughs> it is fried. Dang. That's unfortunate. I'm not sure why. That's what I would find interesting. It's weird because there's discoloration around all the components, like something was on the leaked on the board, but it doesn't have that surface finish you would find if it was like corrosion. Because usually it wouldn't be shiny. But if that's thermal damage, that doesn't really make sense either because like obviously that's thermal damage. It, it's it's been smoked. But then this looks fine. These all look fine. They don't look like they've been smoked. So that's just weird. I can't tell. I pull this out of frame so I can get my own eyes. That square chip is an analog device's chip. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that chip isn't smoked. I think... I think those are just some black marks on the pins, which is weird. Hmm. I don't know. I'm stumped. Maybe I... I jumped to the wrong conclusion. It is very strange how this hall looks. Maybe it's running hot? I don't know. <sighs> but this is beyond my skill level anyways. I was hoping there'd be through hole capacitors in here for some stupid reason. I don't I don't know what I was thinking. I'm just used to thinking of electrolytics as through hole, but these are all surface mount. So yeah, unfortunately for me, this is gonna probably go on eBay. And I'll have to live with my sixty megahertz scope that I still don't really have a use for. <laughs> Other than seeing that the function generator I own works. I do have some audio gear I want to fix eventually, but I have to focus on things that make me money first. One thing, let's see if I can find my cord. Let me steal my cord from my life. I think this will reach against my better judgment. Oh, I think it'll be fine. I want to plug this in and power it on with the cover off. What's the worst that can happen, right? As long as I don't get shocked. No shock and I'm happy. So I need to turn on the power supply. Oh, that's interesting. I heard the um, CRT fire up when I turn on the power supply. I wonder if that's why they go bad so often. All right, now we're turning it on, and that display is doing something. I don't know what. Yeah, have to, can't zoom in and get a good angle. There we go. Currently nothing on the screen. And now it's kind of doing its weird flickering patterns. I 
and it's almost booted. And it's starting to load. Oh, there we go. I got three failed diagnostics again. Acquisition, processor interface, acquisition, and attention acquisition interface have all failed. So, yeah, unfortunately this is beyond my skill to repair. I don't even know where to start. I don't think I'm going to even try. I think the smart thing is just to walk away while I'm ahead and um, let someone more intelligent than me deal with it. There are some buttons and switches inside. I'm sure if I read the documentation maybe these will do something that will help me. Maybe that's a uh, CMOS reset for all I know. Looks like, uh, well, there's probably some pins mounted in the board. I was going to say it looks like these are soldered in, but I would hope that they would uh, make those repairable. I assume, I don't know, I guess. My assumption is that these have batteries in them, but they might not. But, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, definitely a lot more in here going on than I can handle. I don't have much experience with surface mount stuff yet. And I was hoping maybe the capacitors would be a little more obvious, but definitely not something I, I can do. I haven't done surface mount capacitors before, so. Oh well. Hopefully that wasn't too boring of a video. Definitely cool seeing inside this. I'm glad that the um, CRT is fairly well protected. I don't think I could do anything too bad if, without trying really hard at least. But, yeah, that's unfortunate. I was hoping maybe there'd be something obvious that was wrong with it, but that's never how these things go. <laughs> so, thanks for watching.